This is Twit. A bunch of stuff to talk about with Android Q. Um, I, as I mentioned before, I was very impressed with the things that Google has been doing and the investment that they're making in this. Um, and so there are several different aspects. One, a, as you mentioned, um, was Project Mainline. Um, uh, Stephanie Cuthbertson, uh, who's the senior director for Android, uh, explained last week at during Google I.O., she said, your regular device gets regular security updates already, but you still have to wait for the release and you have to reboot when they come. We want you to get these faster, even faster. And she said, and that's why in Android Q, we're making a set of OS modules updatable directly over the air. So now these can be updated individually as soon as they be as soon as they're available and without a reboot of the device. And of course, you know, what that what that says is that they're doing something more like the model that we've now gotten used to with Chrome, where, you know, it's just sort of a rolling latest release and it's being updated, you know, constantly. Essentially, that's what this is known as. It's known internally as Project Mainline. Uh, Google developers have spent the last year working to split um, 14 OS core components into separate modules. And, you know, so even though they're core OS modules, they will be behaving more like applications which are able to be updated on the fly. Um, Google has said that it's going to be pushing the update to all devices which support the mechanism. Um, that what essentially what it'll do is it'll be able to stop that like that subcomponent of the OS to halt it, update it, and then restart it without essentially any impact on what the user is doing. So no need to reset and reboot the OS. It'll just do it on the fly. So the modules are Angle, APK, the Captive Portal Login, Conscript, the DNS Resolver, the Documents UI, uh, External Services, the Media Codex, the Media Framework. And of course, we know the media platform has been a big source of problems in the past. So it's very cool that those can be on the fly updated. Um, uh, network permission configuration, network components. And once again, those are, are internet facing. So they tend to be problematical. So again, if you had to want if you wanted to, to choose things that you'd be able to update on the fly, that's where it would be. Also the permission controller, time zone data and module metadata. Um, so those are all internal core services that, you know, the user doesn't directly see those. So they're not like apps, but they are often the problems where the most security uh, or the, the, the components where the most security problems can be found. So, again, I just, this was not an easy piece of work. Um, what's interesting is that. And I was I wished it was going to be more available. Uh, the Verge that who did some reporting on this learned that as individual device makers uh, will be able to opt out of the new feature, although I don't know why they would choose to. It just seems like a big bonus and plus for their users. Um, but individual device makers will be able to say, no, we don't want to do that. Um, also. It turns out that only devices which initially ship with Android Q will be able to have this functionality. So although older um, devices will be able to be upgraded to using Q, they won't be able to take advantage of Project Mainline. So it, I guess, because it's just very tricky to do, and maybe there's some some hardware side support that's necessary, or maybe you know it's from a security standpoint. It it could be that in order to prevent any malicious abuse of this of this technology, Google has had to incorporate some things uh, from the start that that prevent it from being tampered with. You know, I'm just guessing there, but for whatever reason. 
it's unfortunately devices that that aren't purchased with Android Q will never although you'll be able to get all the benefits of Android Q you won't get this particular on the fly updating of these components so um anyway still a, a nice a nice step forward from from uh 2Q from uh Pi which which is where we've been also uh they announced additional encryption benefits. Um, they explained that storage encryption is one of the most fundamental and effective security technologies, as we know, but that current encryption standards require devices uh, that have cryptographic cell acceleration hardware. Because of this requirement, many devices are not capable of using storage encryption. But remember that we talked last year with their innovation of um, uh, Adiantum, which was their their very cool storage encryption technology, which unlike AES, which is the technology that is often used, um, the problem with AES is that its software, its pure software implementation is necessarily slow because the bit twiddling that has to be done to implement the AES cipher requires many instructions that that are like sort of many generic instructions in order to pull off the bit twiddling that AES requires. That's why Intel um, has the so-called AESNI instruction enhancements, NI standing for new instructions. And those are essentially those move into firmware to in order to speed them up the the bit twiddling that the AES cipher requires. So there is a, a, a very fast stream cipher which is can be implemented in software known as Cha Cha 20. It only uses the simple basic instructions that are fast on all processors. But the challenge there was to come up with a cipher which would not expand the size of the block. Remember, we talked about this before. In uh, It's fine in a stream cipher like over TLS to, to, ha to have to add a little bit of padding or like an, an, an initialization vector to the cipher um, in a communications protocol, you don't care if it makes it a little bit longer. But you can't do that on a block storage protocol because there is nowhere extra to store any additional stuff. So um, uh, Adiantum is Google's, solu is Google's solution for very fast, non-size increasing encrypted content and we get that with Android Q. In fact, all Android Q devices are going to be required to support full um, storage encryption because it'll be built into Q and it's free. It no longer costs anything in terms of, of performance, even if you are on a, a, a non-AESNI compatible or capable platform that would otherwise normally make it much smaller. They said our commitment to the importance of encryption continues with the Android Q release. All compatible Android devices newly launched with Android Q are required to encrypt user data with no exceptions. This includes phones, tablets, televisions, and automotive devices. This will ensure the next generation of devices are more secure than their predecessors and allow the next, as they, as Google said, the next billion people coming online for the first time to do so safely. Um, they also said, however, storage encryption is just one half of the picture, which is why we are also enabling TLS 1.3 support by default in Android Q. Of course, we've talked about that. Uh, it makes handshakes quicker. It supports a next generation of later, um, more secure ciphers. Uh, it explicitly drops support from the older 
uh, SHA-1, hash supporting uh, cipher suites and so forth. So that'll also be built into Android Q. So another, you know, very nice bump forward in security. Um, under platform hardening, this is where I was most impressed. Um, uh, I, I first have sort of an overview of that that I'm going to dip into a little bit further. They said uh, Android utilizes a strategy of defense in depth to ensure that individual implementation bugs are insufficient for bypassing our security systems. Again, individual implementation bugs are insufficient for bypassing our security systems. So the idea being that, I mean, they've recognized that despite a history of attempts to write their, to write secure software, stuff still gets through. So the solution is to acknowledge the reality that stuff is going to get through and to, to make the consequences of stuff getting through um, much less severe. So they said we apply process isolation, attack surface reduction, architectural decomposition, and exploit mitigations to render vulnerabilities more difficult or impossible to exploit and to increase the number of vulnerabilities needed by an attacker to achieve these goals. And I just love the phrasing of that. It's a sober and realistic expression of the truth that we have seen of the challenges facing any highly targeted platform. And Android is arguably the number one most targeted platform now uh, that exists. They said in Android Q, we have applied these strategies to security critical areas such as media, Bluetooth, and the kernel. We describe these improvements more extensively, they said, in a separate blog post, which is where I'm going to go next. But the highlights include a constrained sandbox for software codecs, which is what we'll be focusing on in a second, increased production use of sanitizers to mitigate entire classes of vulnerabilities in components that process untrusted content. Uh, now, actually, that, that's I, I've referred to this both in my own code and in general, the no, the idea is that you perform you you perform sanity checking on parameters rather than you know when you have something that is parameterized, you say rather than just assuming it's correct, you you clamp it with a sanity check to say wait a minute you know does this make sense can, like can this act can a bitmap image actually be this big? Rather, I mean, does it make, is it sane? Um, and so you can, you can catch a huge class of problems just by applying what they call sanitizers. Uh, I call sanity checking. Um, they said also a shallow call stack, which provides backward edge control flow integrity. Control flow integrity, CFI, is a, is a mitigation that, that we've talked about also in the past. Also protecting uh, address space layout randomization against leaks using execute only memory, which is again another means of hardening, um, and uh, and just uh, uh, also tightening up heap related vulnerabilities, making them much more difficult to exploit. 